we, before our program ended, we had, had started, oh, I'd introduced wind, and I'd even told you what really causes wind. But maybe uh, just to remind you, uh, wind is caused by a difference in the atmospheric pressure. Wind is caused by a difference in the atmospheric pressure. Remember, on the earth, where we live, there are two places. We have those places which are cool. So we have the cool areas. And we also have the warm areas. But when wind is moving, wind moves from areas that are warm to areas that are Sorry, it moves from areas that are cool to areas that are warm. Uh, areas with cool or with cool air, areas that are cool, have high air pressure. And those uh, areas that are warm, they have a low air pressure. So wind keeps on moving from areas that are cool to areas that are warm. I'm sure you, you discussed this, remember in P5, you looked at land breathe and sea breathe. So I don't want to go deep into this, but wind is caused by difference in the atmospheric pressure. And that's why we see it, it keeps on moving from one and it goes that way, comes back. So it is moving depending on the areas where it is coming from, okay? Now, as you look at that diagram, when you see those trees, those trees, you see them, they were trying to bend. I probably saw that picture. So those trees that were bending, that was due to, due to wind, that one. It is due to wind. Wind was trying to blow uh, and... You see that they were trying to resist, but wind is saying, no, you have to go that side. So that is a uh, wind. Okay. So we say that wind is air in motion. Well, uh, let us briefly hint something about uh, air. Air, we know it very well as a mixture of gases. I need to remind you of this. I know you had it in P5 and the P3. Okay, now, uh, when you look at air, we say it's a mixture of gases. And these gases, we, we at times call them components of air, all composition, all elements of air. And the components of air, one, we have nitrogen, with the percentage of 78%. We have oxygen with the percentage of 21%. Then we have carbon dioxide. Remember I told you the word carbon dioxide, please you space it. Carbon dioxide uh, with a 0.03%. And and we have rare gases, the rare gases, these ones make 0.97%. Sometimes uh, they give you 1%, which is also correct. Now, please, dear candidates and other semi-candidates who are listening or who are viewing, please take note of this percentage. Take note of this percentage. Yeah, you need to understand that. Nitrogen takes the biggest part in the atmosphere, followed by oxygen, followed by rare gases, and carbon dioxide has the least percentage. Carbon dioxide has the least what? Percentage. Now, I want to give you a sample question here, and it's an application question. It's very good. It's going to help you uh, how you can answer in case the verse two. Uh, the pie chart 
I have a pie chart that, I'm, that they're going to show you. That pie chart shows the composition of air in the atmosphere. So we are going to use it to answer the questions that follow. Um, now, when you look at that pie chart, we have this part here. Uh, they're showing the biggest part. It is labeled with Z, and we have W, we have Y, and we also have X. Now, we are going to see what kind of questions I'll ask just in case they bring such a question, okay? Uh, when you look at the pie chart, you realize that Z is taking the biggest part. Therefore, the biggest part here, that is uh, nitrogen, which has the biggest percentage. And when you look at W, W has the least percentage, so it will take the, the smallest part. So W is our carbon, dio, carbon dioxide. And we have Y. Of course, when you look at, the, according to that illustration there, you, you realize that Y is, a, is a, at least bigger than what? Than X. So Y is oxygen, which is 21%. This was 0.03%. And we have X, which is the third largest, which is 0.97%. And here we have uh, the rare gases. Now, let's look at these questions. Let's look at these questions. Uh, one, they can ask you, uh, name the gas marked W. But remember, for me, I've labeled them for you, but in exams, I may not label them for you. So you have to understand the percentage, which one has the, the, the biggest, fo followed by what and what, okay? So name the gas marked W. And gas W, definitely, uh, that is a uh, carbon dioxide. And how is gas Z useful to plants? Z, of course, of Z we have, that is nitrogen with the biggest part, okay? So, Z is nitrogen. Nitrogen, plants use nitrogen to make plant proteins, all right? Uh, another question Mention N1 process, which uses gas Y. And gas Y is oxygen. They want you to identify the processes that use uh, oxygen. That is, we have germination, we have rusting, okay? We have respiration. All those processes uh, use oxygen. They use gas uh, Y. And give one example of gas X. Gas X, that is rare gases, or rare gases, yeah. So, the one who give examples of rare gases, I've decided to bring them for you, because these ones are not very common. So we have argon, helium, neon, we have the xenon, uh, we have krypton, we have radon, all those are rare gases. And with argon, that is commonly used in the electric bulbs, okay? Now, which of the above gases is used by plants to make proteins? Eh? I know somebody now is, is saying that is nitrogen. That's not correct. But they are saying which of the above gases is used by plants to make plant proteins? Now, go back to the pie chart. They have represented those gases with letters. So you don't mention protein, but you mention the letter that represents that gas. Are you with me? Yes. So 
which of the above gases is used by plants to make proteins, right? So you say that is gas Z. Eh? So many candidates actually uh, make mistakes there. You instead name the gas instead of giving the letter that represents uh, that gas. So we say that is gas Z. Is that an okay? Okay, thank you. Now, uh, I wanted to bring that to help you actually understand application questions that can come from that. Okay? I know you had it in P5, P3, but I, I needed to remind you that. Okay? Uh, let's look at ways people use wind as energy resources. There are so, so, so many uses. But here, we are going to look at how we can use that wind as energy resource. One, wind helps to move doors on water. Wind helps move doors on water. And this is very common in those big water bodies, the oceans. I know we don't have those doors here in Uganda, but wind helps move doors on water. Uh, wind turns windmills to generate electricity. And wind dries our clothes. Okay? It helps to move kites, weather balloons, parachutes. Okay? Wind helps in seed dispersal. And it also helps in the pollination of flowers. Helps in the pollination of flowers. Now, let's go back to point one. We said wind helps to move doors on water. I want to see that picture. Okay? I want to see that picture. Uh, when you look at that picture, you see that those people there, they were using wind actually to move that door. Uh, let's move to another picture there. Uh, you realize that windmills use wind to generate electricity. Now, how is this done? Uh, wind, the kinetic energy of wind, when that wind blows over those blades, it makes them to, to spin. And those blades are connected to the shaft, which is connected to the gearbox. And the gearbox will multiply the rotating, the speed by 100 factor. It rotates, and the, the, the very shaft from the gearbox is connected to the generator, and that shaft where the armature is attached, it spin around the, the area where there is a strong magnetic field in the generator. And the generator will induce the electricity. It will, electricity will be generated. Now, uh, they brought a question that was a PLE. Uh, that I want, to, want us to look at that number before. That was PLE 2014. It was number 29. Uh, they asked what source of energy is used by a windmill to produce electricity. Now, dear candidates, you realize that the source of energy that is used by that windmill is uh, wind. That is what? Wind. And state two uses of wind, of a windmill, sorry. State two uses of a windmill. Now, I want to take you back to uses of wind. Remember, we've, we said that wind turns windmills to generate electricity. Now, they are saying, what are the uses of that windmill? In other words, they can use the word application. They can use the word application. Application of a windmill. One, uh, a windmill is used to generate electricity. It is used to generate electricity. That's application one. 
Hmm? Where do we use the windmill? I know some of you are still there. You're wondering what is the meaning of application. Simply means the use, right? Um, secondly, that windmill is used to pump water from underground. It's used to pump water from underground. Uh, it is used to mill grains like maize. Remember maize, rice, those are cereals. Cereals, these are crops with the grains. Don't forget that. These are crops with what? Grains. We have maize, rice, and so, and so on. Um, well, I want us to look at uh, how wind is used as an energy resource. We've had the list which you saw there on the screen. But now, let's see another picture how wind is useful. There we go. Wind helps in a winnowing. Okay? Wind helps in winnowing. As you see that lady in that activity, she was trying to winnow. They, they are vested grains with a mixture of, uh, of dwarf. Okay? Or with a mixture of husks. Then we have another picture there. You can see those ladies uh, were trying to winnow rice. Okay? There's another one there. A, baby, a mother with a baby, but still was carrying out uh, winnowing. So wind helps in a winnowing. Okay? I know that activity is common everywhere. You don't assume that it's not there in your place. No, it's there. Everywhere people carry out winnowing. Okay? Um, then wind drives kites, weather balloons, parachutes, as you see there on the screen. And we say that wind dries clothes. Wind dries clothes. You can see there. Hmm? Those clothes were hung, but the pressure of the wind, okay? Maybe I need to guide you here. How does wind help in drying clothes? I know they can set that question. How, ca how does wind help in drying clothes? Wind drives moisture out of the clothes by driving moisture out of what? Clothes. Then they, at times they ask you to, to give the property of air that enables one to dry clothes. That is air exerts pressure. That is air exerts what? Pressure. Like you see in the illustration there, those clothes, why they were moving the other end is because of the pressure that was exerted by wind. Okay? So wind dries clothes. Yeah, it can also be used to dry some crops like the cocoa, but it's not very common. So uh, to our level, we normally take that. Mm, then wind helps in seed dispersal. Wind helps in seed dispersal. Look at that example there on the screen. Those seeds were dispersed by wind. Remember, seeds that are dispersed by wind, their characters are, they are light. Sometimes they have a parachute-like structure. They are hairy and so on, okay? That is P6 work. Uh, and then, maybe to give you examples of those seeds that are dispersed by wind, we have the tree ducks. We have dandelion, okay? All the jacaranda seeds. Those ones are dispersed uh, by wind. So you can see that. Wind helps us in seed uh, dispersal. Then wind helps in pollination. As you see there. Wind helps in polline pollination of flowers. You can see we are seeing that bit of where you see the arrows. That is cross-pollination. Uh, the pollen grains are crossing from the anther head of one flower to the stigma of, a, of another flower, but of the same kind, but of the same kind. And those pollen grains are light. That's why they're able to, that's why they can be easily carried by wind, okay? So wind helps in pollination of flowers. Um, 
Now, what are the advantages of using wind energy? What are the advantages of using wind energy? Uh, wind is easy to use. That's one. It is easy to use. And can easily be transformed into other forms of energy. Wind can easily be transformed into other forms of what? Energy, like we've seen with the windmill. Okay? Wind is a renewable resource. Thus, it can be used again and eh? again. That's an advantage. It's a renewable resource. Okay? And then, the use of wind conserves non-renewable energy resources, like the fossil fuels. Talk about the fossil fuels here. We have uh, the petroleum. We have coal. Okay? Those are some of the examples of, we have petroleum, we have coal, natural gas. Those are fossil uh, fuels. So, dear candidates, please don't forget that. Those are the advantages of using wind eh? uh, energy. Is that okay? Now, let's have a look at uh, the dangers of wind. Yes, we've seen this wind is very useful. We need it. But what are the dangers of wind? One, wind destroys crops. Yes, we're going to say this. Secondly, wind causes accidents on water. It leads to food contamination. And it also, it also retards speed, wind retards speed or movement. It can inter inter interrupt communication. It destroys houses where we live. It spreads airborne diseases and blows dust into people's eyes. Okay, let's move to the illustrations here. Uh, one, when you check that illustration, you realize that uh, that banana plantation was destroyed by what? By wind. Remember, this banana are perennial crops. They take long to, to mature, and that's very dangerous. So wind destroys what? Our crops. You see that woman was busy, worried. Uh, rice was, all, all the plantation was down, okay? Then, we also say that wind causes accidents on water. Uh, look at that. Hmm? That man was uh, on a speedy boat. What happened? <laughs> you realize had to, the, the boat turned upside down. Hmm? And then you look at that diagram there. Hmm? The boat is down. So wind causes accidents on water. Uh, let's see. Another one there. Wind, we said wind retards speed, all movement. You can see that lady was trying to run, but wind is saying no. Okay, so that resistance, wind retards speed, all movement. Uh, candidates who are writing, please uh, take note of that mistake that was done. Wind retards, of, that off is not there. So ignore that. Okay, so wind retard speed all movement now let me give you this example here uh, for example if i get this chalk you see it and a rub and a, a duster or a piece of paper and i throw them from the same place or from the same angle i list them to go down now you will realize that chalk will reach the ground faster than, let's say, if this was a piece of paper. Why? The piece of paper will take long to reach the ground because it will undergo high air resistance. Okay? It will undergo high air what? Resistance. It has more air resistance than the piece of oh, chalk. Um, let's look at that other illustration there where wind uh, is destroying people's houses there. You can see the roofs are off. Mm? The walls, 
they're getting broken. So wind destroys houses. And then it raises dust in the environment. This is true when you see out there, for, for instance, with the whirlwind, when you see it moving, okay? It raises the dust in the environment and it blows dust into people's eyes. You're going to see that baby there was crying. <laughs> A little boy was crying. The dust had gone into uh, his eyes. So those are all uh, dangers of wind. That was a question that was set last year, 2019. It was PLE 2019. Hope you've got it well. Uh, let's have a, a summary of wind by looking at those questions there. I know they can help you a lot. Uh, what causes wind? We've discussed it. Give to users of a windmill. We have also discussed that. Uh, how does wind help in drying clothes? We have already seen that. What source of energy is used by windmills? We've seen it. Which part of air is used in each of the following? Which part or component of air, the atmosphere, is used in each of the following? One, we have respiration. And that is the oxygen. You have stopping fire. That is good, carbon dioxide. We have the lighting bulbs. Those ones use nitrogen. They can use argon. Then photosynthesis. Uh, that one uses carbon dioxide. Remember, photosynthesis and water are the raw materials that are needed for photosynthesis to take place. Uh, well, that is it with wind. Let's look at another uh, energy resource, and that is the sun as an energy resource. Uh, dear friends, when you peep through that window, you notice that you, uh, you can see enough light out there. That enough light you're seeing from out is coming from the sun, okay? Others are able to, to view the sun rays, okay? That is all the, the sun. And the sun is very important. We need it. It's an energy resource. It's an energy resource. Now, how do we as people use sun as an energy resource? Uh, one, the light from the sun is used by people to see, okay? The light from the sun is used by people to, to see. And that same light is also used in the production or in the generation of solar energy, in the generation of solar electricity. Remember, as I, as I told you that this sun is very important. It's the natural source of energy on the earth. And the energy that is good from the sun, that is what we call solar energy. Okay? However, the sun is the major source or is the primary source of energy on the earth. Why? Because it provides uh, many forms of energy provides many forms of energy. Is that okay? Uh, let me hope I'm not speedy. Uh, then, the other use of the sun as an energy resource. Uh, one, I told you that the sun provides light, which enables people to see properly. Then, it enables plants to make their own food. During which process? Uh, during the process of photosynthesis. So sunlight enables plants to make their own food. And we've already seen it is used to generate solar electricity. And heat from the sun, it also enables the skin to make vitamin D. 
some people, they always say that you go under the sunshine and get vitamin D. The sunshine does not provide vitamin D, but it enables the skin uh, to make vitamin D. And heat from the sun causes evapotranspiration to form rain. Of course, when I talk about evapotranspiration, those are two words. That is evaporation and transpiration. It causes evaporation and also causes transpira transpiration to form rain. They always ask you uh, to state the use of the sun during rain formation. The answer is there. Heat from the sun causes evapotranspiration to form rain. And heat from the sun is used in solar heaters, cookers, dryers to cook food, preserve food, and also boil water. There's a colleague of mine who called me and was uh, like saying, teacher, what is the use of the solar heater? What is the use of the solar dryer? I think the answers are there. Okay? Um, and heat from the sun keeps us warm. It keeps us warm. That heat from the sun, it keeps you uh, warm. So, dear candidates, those are some of the uses of the sun as an energy resource. Is that okay? Well, when you, let's, let's look at that picture there. I wanted to show you. Uh, you can look at that. That is heat from the sun. And people had hung their clothes out to be dried. Look at... Uh, the moanyi, moanyi guguao, okay? Heat, they had displayed it in order for the heat from the sun to dry it. Uh, we have another illustration there. Now you see that heat from the sun helps in rain formation. Hope you know the steps there uh, that are involved in rain formation. I'll not go into details. Um, well, I want us to rate these two pictures, because this is another question that is at times challenging to most of you. Uh, look at that diagram. They're saying we use it to answer questions. Where have I not dwelled much on the other? I know you covered it. Now, when you look at that uh, illustration, one, they can ask you that what natural process is shown in that experiment? What natural process is shown in that eh? experiment? And that is a water cycle. Uh -huh. Then, what do the following represent? The charcoal stove. Now, the charcoal stove there is representing the what? The sun. Because it has got charcoal that is producing the heat. Okay? And water in the kettle is representing the water body and the cold water the nimbus clouds well they may ask you to give the use of that cold water in that bottle the cold water is basically there to condense the hot, the hot vapor or to condense the water vapor is that okay so that illustration it is representing a natural process it's actually, we use it to represent how rain is formed. Okay? Uh, let us move on. We say that the sun helps in the generation of solar energy, of solar electricity. But remember, with this solar electricity, there are components of solar panel, things that we need in order to generate solar electricity. What do we need here? So the components, one, if you look at that illustration, uh, we need a solar panel, and the solar panel traps sunlight energy from the sun. That's a common mistake, people say traps it. But it traps sunlight energy from the, the sun. You can see those who have uh, 
uh, solar torches, those small solar torches, you realize that even if you put it in your window, it will recharge. Why? It only senses the light from the sun. Okay? Uh, we have the solar cell. A uh, solar cell converts sunlight energy into solar electricity. And we also need the solar battery. If you look at that diagram, there's a solar battery there. That one stores electric energy in form of chemical energy. So the solar panels will trap the sunlight energy. And these solar panels are painted black mainly to absorb sunlight. They are painted black to absorb sunlight. So when they trap that sunlight, the solar cells, if you can see in that yellow uh, line, they wrote their solar cells. So those solar cells, they trap, I mean they convert that sunlight energy into solar electricity. Then the solar battery down there will store that electric energy in form of chemical energy. Now, let's continue. Uh, we have already seen that. I think for those of you who are taking note, please feel free and take note. Um, let's look at those questions there. Why are solar panels painted black in color? I've already shown you that, that they are painted black mainly to absorb sunlight energy, not heat. They are painted black to absorb sunlight energy. Then secondly, why are solar panels placed on top of the roof? This is to prevent obstruction from the sun. This is to prevent obstruction from the, the sun. And then also to trap enough sunlight energy. Okay? Number three. Why does it have a large surface area? It is mainly to trap enough sunlight energy. The, en the large surface area is to trap enough sunlight energy. And why won't a solar panel uh, put under the bed work? Eh? <laughs> it is because it does not get sunlight. Okay? When you hide it in the bed, it will not work because it will not have, no, it will not have access to sunlight. So that's why... Uh, that solar panel that you put under your bed, under your chair, will not work because it does not get uh, sunlight. Okay? Now, uh, the solar cooker, as I told you, I've got a message here. Somebody wanted to really see how a solar cooker looks like. And my professor is going to show you. Uh, that's a, a solar cooker cooker. Uh, we use it, they're going to show you, uh, we use it to cook or to heat water, okay? You're going to see it, uh, that one exactly, all right? That's a solar cooker. Then we move on to the solar dryer. That's a solar, I'm going to show you the solar dryer. Mm. Is that illustration? My professor is going to show you. Uh huh. The solar dryer. Okay. Uh, we shall show you later on. But that one there. Mm -hmm. That's a solar uh, dryer. Well, dear candidates, as uh, I wind up with the sun as an energy resource, let me take you through some of these questions that I are really very that are really very important, and you need to, to know them. One, how does the sun, how does the heat from the sun reach the earth? How does heat from the sun reach the earth? That is through radi radiation. Remember, we, we look at heat transfer in P5. We look at those methods, how it is transferred. Okay, so heat from the sun reaches us through radi uh, radiation. And why are solar panels coated with a black surface? You remember the answer? Those of you remember the answer. Thumbs up for you. 
a big clap. Good. Uh, I told that solar panels are quoted, are quoted with a black surface to absorb hey, sunlight energy, not heat. Then, uh, state two ways the sun is used as an energy resource. I've already, I've already shown you that. Give the type of electricity produced from the sun. That is solar electricity. And give two forms of energy from the sun. And it's very cheap, very simple. We have the heat, the light. <laughs> uh -huh. How are the following important in the generation of solar electricity? Okay. One, we have the solar panel. I told that one traps sunlight, energy from the sun. The solar cells convert sunlight energy into solar electricity. And the solar battery stores electric energy in form of chemical energy. Are we together, candidates? Okay. Uh, and lastly, state two ways in which the use of solar electricity is friendly to the environment. How is it friendly? Now, you'll notice that when you're using solar electricity, it does not produce smoke that pollutes the environment. And can be used for cooking, which reduces uh, deforestation for wood fuel. Introduces the cutting down of trees for wood fuel. So that's a very good question, candidates. Please take note. Uh, they may ask you that. And uh, we are going to look at our last. We are going to look at uh, briefly. I uh, allow me just talk about it because our time is already up, and that is water as an energy resource. Uh, due to time, I will not be able to handle it, but next time when we meet, I'll be uh, handling that. But as I conclude, I want to thank you very much, uh, fellow teachers, candidates, uh, Mr. Kim from Masaka, thank you very much. Teacher Dan, you have, you, you, you've, been, you've told me that you've been watching, thank you very much. Uh, Teacher Baleke from Sapo Kagwa here, Thank you very much. Uh, please, dear candidates, make sure you wash your hands uh, regularly. Avoid taking, putting that pen on your lips. I know some of you are good at that. Please avoid that and sanitize all the time. Uh, stay safe. Stay home. May God bless you. Tuenze nyo tuenze gyo Master Katunku. Unako wencha kusawa zilio muenda pake sawa kumi. Tutoro kubeda ni kilasi e, ya wana basi ni yomukaga. Netu jajiongeza yetu jajisembeza keno kumpi. Orwe nisonga sawa zituja kuwa ni misa e, yoyo unaku rokutanu. E, misa yoyo e, ya uh, Good Friday. E, Jaku wajiri between uba wakati we sawa muenda ni sawa e, kumi. Na wachitua au tuja kuteka o misa katuja kuwa ni kilasi eno e, no, waso kila dada. Na wachitua tuwelenga tuchiteka munte katika tuli la zili sawa au tuja kuwa tugena mumisa. Ilano unako walero tosubua tuja kuwa anga ni misa tuja kuwa ni misa yu kusawa zikena kuwe la kumi unako walero e, ya Good Friday. Yandi e, badi yu kuna zevi gere owe yu kuna zevi gere ni mjukire nti uroa nsonge ya social distancing tuja kuwa tupateza butelebe tupaweza butelebe misa ngegenda maso wano eruwaga inteka teke yu weli telefaini ya fe. Ya kutusa kubuli nsonga yu na nukuisa mwore wikeno nga tukua uvaka vuna ure nsonga nti muna nge tukena kusubala genda mu misa ure mbela jetulimu tulikuro kudauni hatela tuwa galukula bante bante wasi gadanga vali safe. Masa katunku amazo kutuwa esumori ya science agami nitu muna da ataja kuongedo kutuwa kumsonge ya energy resources uh, tuwade tuliku Ebinja wabi mzo kusuma ni ya water agami ja kumanga ajiu genda ko ate jebuna ja masa o muichi eja. Nyongero kwe waza abateka muse nite panafa wa Miranda High School ate Gwini Schools ate la ne teka teke panafe ya wa Nkumba University okono kosa ne Big Penny. Tugena kuda ne okubala. Ero msume sa wako kubala ya tuseda ye wali ava wano kuruwili. Abea mengo eses ya geno kubanga tuwa la mute katika iyo kubala. Tukuma u tofa kutelefai na yafe.
Somera Mudiroryo nge wagidwa Maryland High School elisangi wentebe Somero lya bawala na balenzi dusomesa arts and sciences okuvira dala kusini esoka okutukira dala kusini yomukaga ngali sangi ba muchifechi wewe po bulunje tuli ne bisule byomulembe science laboratory sakoni computer lab wamune she gives you her number but your pen didn't work and the bus is gone Get a pen you can rely on. Big Crystal, the long-lasting pen with perfect ink flow. Wamune. Green Hill Academy has high standards of learning and the teachers are very good. They give you a sense of belonging. Green Hill has helped me to discover my talent. The environment is good. Encourage us children to be excellent. Now what you wanna come find here, I beg? What is happening? A lot. Ho ho! Funa ebi akabi mu yuga wood, Nollywood, Bollywood, Hollywood. Sika tuni ebi ziki ebi ebi zanyo nebi dala antoko. Airtel TV ebi ebi amasenyo kusimu yo. Awatari kusasula ya daka sente kona ya dobo lango lango buta wanya. Genda mu Google Play oba App Store o wanureka app ka wereere. Ah mateka no bukwa kurizo bigo bereerwa. Airtel the smartphone network. Maryland High School elisangi wentebe somero lya bawala na balenzi dusomesa arts and sciences okuvira dala kusini esoka okutukira dala kusini yomukaga ngali sangi ba muchifechi wewe po bulunje tuli ne bisule byomulembe science laboratory sakoni computer lab abasomesa bafa batendeke moko somesa no kubangula abayizi kuno ngatuongira kuno kulembeza ebitone kati nnugo muzadde omwana omulete muchifochi muchoka ekigendo kumuyambo kongero kunyikiza ebibya soma irange somero liri muliyo ka ye Maryland High School elisangi wentebe no kumanya bisinga Tukubile ku numbers ya simu ezo wa manga Owangi jibaliku Okuteko kusente lero Munyoruga mutu kayo Olinye lifti Hobo kuteko mapesa ka komputa yoko mulimu Oinago kuteko mungalo Oba kusimu yoye njini Weta ka skin guard hand wash Soap ne sanitizer Linda kukatono Tunuri ngalozo Waziraba Zekwe ke duamu Obu huko busoba mmetualo kuminetano Ate bulibuli wamu Katino uli ya mauli ya marunji Weta ka skin guard hand wash Soap ne sanitizer Mumikono jo Mubibatu, 